Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. In this video, I thought I'd share with you my new painting process with acrylics. It's kind of my first time dabbling with acrylics since university, so I wanted to share this process with you just because I found it really interesting and it's so different from using gouache or watercolor. So this reference image is from Show Studio. We've been asked to collaborate with them for their V Magazine photo shoots. And what was really cool about this shoot was that they had a projector projected onto the model with different shapes and colors drawn by people from all over the world. And so it was interesting to pull all those elements and put them into this illustration. I'll show you the reference image at the end with my final drawing next to it so you can see the difference. As you can see, I'm just drawing over old sketchbook page that I don't really particularly like. So I'm doing this whole concept on drawing over drawings that I don't really want to keep. And it's a nice way of not wasting paper and you get additional practice from the page. And it's nice to just recycle. So my first time using acrylic since university. So I'm really dabbling with it and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And I really challenge myself because the actual reference image, because there was a projector on top of the model, her skin tone is quite blue. So I wanted to challenge myself and paint a very unconventional skin tone, which has a blue tinge to it. And I thought it was quite fun because it reminds me of the fifth element. Just a little bit out there because I think that's my goal this year is to really explore different types of skin tone and really embrace different colors. At this point, I've blocked out all the um, skin tone areas. Think of them as shapes. So some shapes are darker or lighter than the others. And then what I do with a thinner brush is I go in and add a little bit more detail, like the eyebrows and underneath the nose and the chin. And of course, you have to have that shape for the cheekbone area and the jawline. And reiterating all the shadow areas with this like neutral gray tone. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that um, I work kind of all over the place. So essentially, I'm just sculpting things out. So you can see here I'm adding all my values. So the light value, the medium value, and the dark values. I do this constantly, um, seeing which area needs the dark and the light. And I keep going back and forth and thinking about colors, adjusting them, making them more blue or more lighter, light blue. And then my favorite part, which is adding the lip color. In this case, from the reference image, is bright red. So with acrylics, I notice that I can go dark and I can always add a highlight on top, which is so much different from the water-based medium, like gouache and watercolor. Because it's so thick that even if I make a mistake, I can always go back and fix it, which I find is more refreshing and more easy to make mistakes and fix the mistakes than with watercolor or gouache. So as you see here, you can still see my drawings from the underneath, but gradually, which is interesting with acrylic, is that those drawings will start to disappear and kind of mesh in with the background, if that makes sense. So again, with my thin brush, I like to add my details with the eyes. And yeah, you can see how doing all this and adding the different background kind of makes the whole face pop a bit more. At this point, I'm trying to smooth things out because it looks a bit chunky. <laughs> And what I also found was that um, if you make a particular mix of color, you have to use it where it's needed or it dries too fast. So another thing with acrylic that I found really difficult was that um, it dries super quick. It would dry in a few minutes. And so I have to make fast decisions on where I want to put them. I usually tend to mix a little bit at a time so it dries really quick. I know you can put water on top of it to prevent it from drying very quick, but it does thin it out quite a bit, as you can see on top of the head. The brown is a little bit watery. 
So I do find using acrylic takes me longer because I have to keep mixing and remixing the paint. So now I'm using some white paint to flesh out the jewelry parts. Um, as you can see, adding the white paint, you can't see the drawing underneath, which is fantastic. So now I'm doing the background and I just made loads, so I don't have to make it again and try to cover more ground. So I keep adding my white and trying to mix it on the spot. And this is quite nice because, you know, if I made something a bit too dark or too light, I can always readjust it. So again, going in with my darkest darks and adding it really bumps up the contrast. So I love this part. So notice adding this dark really helps um, the face pop away from the background. Uh, you will see in the reference image, there's so many lines and really interesting patterns going on. So I'm trying to capture all that. Adding another layer of dark blue. And this part is really scary, but I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> and I use my fingers to soften the edges. So I'm adding the background to give more context to the space. And of course, I'm drawing the garment and she's wearing Fendi this time, which is the new collection from Fendi Fall Winter 2022. So just some loose brush strokes. So what I'm trying not to do so much this year is trying to be perfect and try to render everything <laughs> till it dies. <laughs> I'm learning how to not control everything and leave some unfinished areas. Again, I'm just adding more values to the face and making the shapes a bit more cohesive with each other and soften it. So now I'm adding those details from the projector. And what I love about this stage of the drawing is to really think about my edges. How are the edges working with the background and how I can connect the disconnected areas. Since I'm using the dark value, I'm adding more details on the elements of the face and of course adding more highlights. Hopefully you can see the highlight shapes just lifting the face up a bit and adding more 3D volume and form. So the fun part, going into the background and solidifying it into a big shape. I feel like this step kind of makes everything a bit more cleaner. So the background drawing is there from the previous um, sketch, but it kind of adds to it, gives almost like a ghostly appearance. Again, I'm just going darker into the garment because at the moment it's a bit translucent. Now I'm adding those lines that I saw from the reference photo from the projection projecting onto the model. Again, I'm cleaning up the edges and adding the shapes. I know in the reference image, the background is one solid color, 
but I think because this is an illustration, we can change that by adding some shapes that are lighter and some shapes that are a bit more orange. I think that gives more depth to the background and just a bit of variation. Now I'm adding some highlights on top of the head and onto the jewelry. Here I'm using different shades of orange to give that variation. And to solidify the edges a bit more. So like I said with acrylic, it's so nice because you can actually cover you know, mistakes that you've made. So in this case, the old drawing underneath. And adding my details on top. As mentioned before, acrylic dries really quick, so you can move fast. This part is quite actually fun because there's so many lines and I love, I love drawing lines with the paintbrush. So a little bit more detail on the Fendi top. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how I start my acrylic painting and I'm definitely new to this so it's been very enjoyable to share the journey with you. Here's the still of the painting and the reference image. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe and I hope to see you again in the next one. Take care.